At times, we all feel lost in search of something more. This is Christina Dam, and this is the Liberate the Podcast, a podcast designed to help inspire and guide you forward through everything spirituality, creativity, art, and just giving you a sense of empowerment so that you can be powerful, be magical, and be free. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Liberate the Podcast. We're welcoming one of our very own facilitators with us today, and her name is Kirsten Korat, and she does a lot of different things. So she's a moonologist, which is really fascinating, and we're going to get into that, as well as she's the founder of Nature Nature Experiences, uh, is an amazing sound healer, imagery practitioner, and holistic practitioner, too. So there's a lot of different things, but, you know, today we're going to dive into the three things that she loves the most, most, which are nature, the moon, and animals. So kind of where we're going with that and how that, that all folds together. There'll probably be a few amazing uh, conversations and topics to explore within that, but welcome. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here with you. Happy to have you. And, you know, I think first we need to get into the question of, What's a moonologist? Because, yeah, yeah, okay, you know, and then we'll go from there. So I had been working with the moon probably for like 20 years doing so new moon and full moon rituals. Mm -hmm. And then I came when, across. And you do some here. Yeah, I do some here. <laughs> and then I came across um, Yasmin Boland, who's very well known as the person who kind of founded moonology. And I studied with her over the course of the last few years, when she opened up and decided to open up her first program to certify people as moonologers. And I was like, let me take it to a deeper level. And so what it is really doing is not only working with the new and the full moon, but working with all the phases of the moon as a self-care calendar, which mm. I really love, so that you're checking in with all the different phases and then you're using practical tools and ritual tools to release for the full moon and get all those things out of the body to clear space. Like we clear the clutter in our head, we clear mm. the clutter in our bodies, in our places where we live, all of those things to make space for them, what we want to invite in at the new moon. But there's also all the other phases that are going on too, as well as the daily moon. And so there's lessons you can learn on how to... Uh, have a deeper connection with yourself by aligning with what the moon is naturally doing. Hmm. So it's using using the power of the moon to understand your own life and work with those energies on a on on a deeper level to create or release the things that you want. Correct. And to and for manifesting because really manifesting is what we want to do in our lives, what we want to invite in and one of the biggest uh, you know, blocks to manifesting is self-doubt. So it's like working with our own limiting beliefs and things like that, but aligning it in beautiful ways with what the universe is teaching us. I see. I love that. Yeah. And so, you, but prior to doing and working with the moon, even though you were working with it, but studying deeper, um, you've been doing sound healing for quite a while too, right? I, yeah, way before people knew what it was, I came to sound. Before it became the popular <laughs> thing to do on a Thursday night. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, we're talking uh, back in the 90s. Wow. Is when I first started exploring it. And it happened because I was dealing with an illness. And I was a musician first. Okay. And so I knew the power of healing with singing and things like that from my music because I used to hear that when I was a singer. And then I wanted to explore what's going on here with vibration and sound. I didn't know anybody that was doing it at the time. And then I came across Mitchell Gaynor, who is very well known for his book, The Healing Power of Sound in Dealing with Illness. And I was going through an illness and I reached out to him and I started learning. Wow. Um, from a, you know an oncologist, he was a cancer doctor. And so that like brought me into that world and- Wow, yeah. since the 90s, you no, know, that's, that's, that's great. And that's way, you know, and to have your own personal experience with the power that sound healing had on your personal healing. Yes. 
you know, because that mean a lot of people, you know, they get into things because they're interested in things like that, but to also have an overcoming experience, right? You know, because you're here today. So I'm right. guessing that it all, it all worked yeah. out. <laughs> yeah, um, it was learning how to use it on my own body and being my own guinea pig with all these things way before there were the teachers that I eventually ran into that then taught me to deepen that. But then feeling it on my own body, it's like I could be on both sides of being the healer and the one who healed. Yeah, I love yeah. that. And then this love for animals. And you do these beautiful like women and wolves and sound healing. I mean, all three of those things sound amazing in the full moon or in the moon, I'm sure at night sometimes, right? You know? Yeah, always at night. Yeah. Always at night. So um, what your, you know, I mean, animals are pretty self-explanatory, but what was your passion for, you know, connecting deeper with animals? So I was one of these kids that used to rescue animals and bring them home when okay. I was little. And usually a lot of them were injured. And then I would say, here, mommy, help me fix this animal. <laughs> And so I was always with animals and I used to have really vivid dreams of wolves mm -hmm. since I was a very little girl. So, and I chased coyotes when I was, I mean, I've always been really connected to animals just as a kid. And so after I was ill, I kind of, um, and I helped heal myself. I said, what are the things that I love the most? And one of them was animals. And I said, I got to find a way to put sound and animals together. I didn't really know how I was going to do that. And then I met a pack of wolves through through friends of mine that have a, a sanctuary. And I had a crazy idea. And I said to them, can I come and do a sound bath with, with the pack, you know, and can we bring some people? And <laughs> Can we bring some people to sit with the wolves and play, play some singing bowls? And I, I, decided to do, you know, an event and it sold out the first day and we added a second day and it sold out and it started back in 2012. Wow. And it just was such a powerful healing experience and it allowed me to be able to do all the things that I love, but also to bring people out of the day-to-day -day stress into nature and be with these animals that are amazing teachers. Mm-hmm. Um, and healers themselves, and to just create something where we just really get deeply connected, you yeah. know, to ourselves, and also to help um, pe people be aware of the impact we can make on helping to protect these animals as well. Beautiful, and I'm sure they get a lot out of it too. And they do, they do. They love, you know, they're. There are, um, in the pack, just like in human beings, there are healers, there are teachers, and so they can feel if somebody needs some extra healing and attention, and they can, you know, they're just amazing animals, and, uh, and they love being around the people and soaking in that energy, you know, too, as well. Yeah. And they love sound. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, it does wonders on, on us. You know, but it's it does wonders on molecules, you know, so the smallest, yeah, you know, and so animals, they don't have resistance. They don't have that that clutter in the mind that says this is stupid or this or this or whatever the the negative thought patterns can happen that block people sometimes, even though their body will still receive some. But when you're more open and you're just receptive, you even get a deeper transmission, right? Exactly, you know? exactly. And that's one of the lessons is that when you can be with animals, you learn how to be fully present because they're not in their mind chatter. They're not in the past. They're not in the future. They're completely in the present. And so as humans, when we watch that, then it like opens us up because they're playful uh, as well. And it opens up those parts of us that sometimes we we just lose track of because we're rushing, rushing, rushing. So it's able to get still and quiet and be present like animals are. And then it it really brings you into it, that childlike quality too. Wow, that's yeah. beautiful. I'll have to go to one one of these Yeah, times. you have to come with me. And then, and then I know that we chatted a little bit before we started the podcast about how you know, the last two years or so have been such an unknown time and that, 
you know, one of the things that you wanted to talk about was navigating that and manifesting within that, right? You know, so let's so let's jump a little bit to to that and how do people deal with all this uncertainty that's constantly bombarded? I think um, the greatest lesson that I learned when I was very ill about over like 20 years ago was that when I was dealing with like Western medical and I was trying to do Eastern at the same time, there were a lot of unknowns because when I was ill, there was no cure. Mm -hmm. And so I was completely in the unknown. And that's, that's when a lot of us, when we're in the unknown, we go, we automatically get in that place of fear. Yeah. Right. And so I had to kind of flip it because I'm in the unknown, I'm in a new territory, even the people that are the experts don't quite know what to do, so what do I do? I flipped it and said, well, okay, if I look at it a different way, the unknown is a place of all possibilities. Mm. The unknown is a place of magic. If I flip it and I say, instead of being afraid of the unknown, I'm gonna embrace the unknown, that means that even though I'm a doctor saying to me, well, you may not be alive in eight years from now, I can say, well, maybe I will be because we're in the unknown. <laughs> yeah. so, so it's a matter of taking, like we've had these last couple of years, we're in the unknown, but in that, when we've been in the unknown, flipping that into a place of in the unknown, instead of you being tied down to this fear, you are in this expansive place of that means everything is possible. Yeah. And so that can help release some of the stress of like, let's not go into that negative space, but let's look at what is possible and how can I empower myself in being in the unknown to create that that positive energy. And so looking at, well, even though I life is different and life looks different, we all have to maneuver challenges and changes. But within that, we have the power to control our response to it. Yeah. Absolutely. And so that gives us a sense of power. And so I think it's a matter of getting people to understand, even when the world feels like it's caving in, you still have the power to create your own experience within that. And you doesn't mean you let go of your dreams. You just like dig into something that you love doing, find the place to, to look at the possibilities beyond that and know that you can create whatever it is that you want to manifest by starting to put the energy towards it. I love that. Yeah. And and it really is. I mean, we are always are living in the unknown. Exactly. It's just that we sometimes have this, we create some very specific plans and then we live with this false kind of belief system that there's a certain security, right, within it. And, you know, we can predict our future, right? But it's in these times of troubling times like, what's going on globally or when you face a health crisis or when you're unsure of, you know, these big shakers in your life that you really realize how much of the unknown you're really faced with. And I like the fact that you said, well, yeah, if it's unknown, you can manifest anything within that, right? Yeah. And so it's almost like giving people back the power of their life and saying, okay, what story are you going to tell yourself? Is it going to be the one of you know, you're putting down the white flag and you're giving up and, you know, or is it going to be the one of your victorious and there's solutions and that you come out even better? Right. And then maybe there's a lesson there in there of, well, maybe there's something you've been putting on hold that you really wanted to do, but now's the opportunity because like we were all shut down. So we were in this space of like, well, now I'm sitting my with my thoughts and I'm seeing all those things. Is there something that, my heart is telling me is there something my intuition is telling me and like that deeper connection of like going in and saying well what is something i really want to do because i don't really know what what the future looks like but i can create it and so i think that we saw a lot of people flip their businesses in different ways in these last couple of years because they had to get creative you enjoying this so far did you forget to subscribe make sure to do so it takes two seconds Press that little button, the red one, you know, the one, just press it, little like, all right, enjoy the rest of this content. And yeah. a lot of people went back to school, studied right. other things, decided to pivot, decided to quit a job, start a different job. Well, you know, there's a lot of transitions happening. 
you know, and I think that we're going in a very transitional like state as a collective, you know, and that translates to individuals having these massive transitions and in their life. Um, but, you know, it's it's a really beautiful time, even though it, you know, people can look at it and say, oh, well, all the gloom and all these, you know, regulations or there's these these problems or there's the health scares and all this stuff. And you can say, OK, yes. But then what are you gaining? Right. Like you're saying. What in here? Because at any time in history, there's always something. Maybe this is one time in history that it's happening collectively to so many people at the same time. But I don't think it, you know, you can take anybody's life and there's always something happening. Yeah. You know. And I think what we were talking about, like using the moonology and using sound and all those things, the power of all of these to these tools that we have, meditation and sound and using connected with nature is that the deeper we get connected to ourself mm -hmm. then we and we really listen to our intuition it can be such a great guide in these times to really like hone in on what is it that i really do want mm -hmm. and what is it that i really want to let go of and so that's why when you're asking me at the beginning moonology why i love that so much is because we're by doing that every month, you start to get to know yourself more and you really know what you want and what you don't want and what's working and what isn't working because you're doing the, you're moving like the moon through phases. Oh, that's interesting. And so that's why I was saying it's like a self-care calendar because every month there's different energies that are also going on with the planets. Okay. There's different themes. So like we we just went through this this last new moon, which is all about releasing the past and really moving towards the future. And we're getting ready to set the tone for a new year. So you look at like when I'm, you know, you look at the phases and go, okay, what is it that I really need to release? But then when you get in with sound and you get in with journaling, I love journaling with the moon, then you're actually sitting with yourself and going, what what is it that I really want? And a lot of times we just don't do that. We don't really sit with ourselves. Oh yeah, it's so many and people. They, yeah, that's a, one of the things that I've noticed over and over again working with clients and just even people and having conversations. Uh, the, we live in a world that everybody loves to complain about how their life isn't working or how something's going wrong. But then you ask them, well, what do you want? What do you want instead? How do you want your life to be? And most times, not all times, and hoping the people that are listening, some of you have sat there and at times, I mean, at times I've been lost and I can't answer that question and at times I can, right? But people look like deer in headlights, you know? And they can't be specific, they don't know. So I love that this is a practice that you like, you sit down once a month and you set clear intentions, but it's not even just the clear intentions of what you want to bring in, but it's what aspects you want to let go of. Right, right. Which I think is like the, the you know, icing on the cake in a way, you know, because a lot of times you need a clear in order to allow new in. And the thing is that you're not just writing an affirmation down. You're actually sitting and saying, you know, like, what am I really re ready to let go of? And I tell people, if you're 50-50, you're not committed to it then. You've mm -hmm. got to be like 60% or more in. And and even the manifesting, believe you can actually create mm -hmm. that. Because otherwise then what happens is we don't take the action steps towards it. Yeah. But each month that you do this, and what I do for people also is I create their 12-month moon, their moon plan, which means that they can get a look at the year ahead and know how, based off their natal chart, how that new moon is gonna affect them, how that full moon is gonna affect them, and like what area of their life they need to sit with. Oh, that's and great. look at. So then it's not like taking everything on, but it's like, okay, this month it's telling me I need, it's in my career house. This next month it's telling me it's in, you know, my relationship house, for example. So I'm going to sit with what I need to release around that if it's a full moon, mm -hmm. or I'm going to sit with what I need to call in and what I really want to manifest if it's a new moon. So you kind of have this calendar that you can even look ahead without it being overwhelming. And by the time you've gone through the whole year, you've like worked through 
all the different areas of your life, your career, your finances, your relationships, all of those things. And that's why I say it's like a using the moon as a self-care calendar, which I love. No, that's that's beautiful. And like sometimes when you focus on too many things at once, it becomes overwhelming. So it's like, okay, well, if I was just correcting this area of my life, right? How can this be, you know, 10% better, yeah, 100% better, whatever that is for somebody. Oh, that's really beautiful. And so like each month, so out of the 12 months, like there's there's no none that repeat itself, right? It's just different areas. So there's 12 areas of well, life. Well, there, there will be areas where it will repeat itself in the sense of you'll go through a new moon phase with it and you will go through, through a full moon phase with it. So you're going through both the the inviting in and the releasing parts of it, yeah. Okay, but I mean like, you know, January is different than June and June's different than this. So yeah. like all 12 of the and months are a different kind of theme. There will be some times when you may double up on something depending on your chart where okay. it is. And so it's telling you, you have and another opportunity. Like, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. This but, is really like push yeah, this through is this it. year. <laughs> okay, that's awesome. Right, and then we can do, or you know, I do new moon or full moon reports where they just get for that month. And they know that like what they need to hone on for that month and um and they really like it because it's like then you have then you kind of have it set up so you're not just guessing but you're really like honing in and taking a look at a deeper level at a certain aspect of your life and you have to get real with yourself i mean yeah. that's the thing that's hard for us is but if we want to make the progress we just have to have a real conversation with ourselves and not like fool ourselves but Doing it with the moon is kind of a magical way to do it too, and yeah, and it yeah. kind of yeah adds that magic to it, adds that other energies, belief in a power greater than you yes. that's helping support. So, you know, by default, you're also saying this isn't just me doing it. There, I have assistance, right? Right. And so, a lot of times that holding that belief system can even act like, you know, and it, it's there and it's really there and it's helping push along. But even, even on some level, on a deeper level, can even be working with the brain on and like a placebo effect too, you know, like it's like, okay, like, you know, I can really get this because, you know, like, I think I'm going to get better. So I am going to get better. So I think this is going to manifest. So I am. And then there's the energy and then there's the intention and there's the clarity. Right. So it's like a, like a quadruple whammy. Like when we do them here, what you know, when we're doing the the um, full moon or we've done the new moon here, we're, we'll do some of the journaling, and then we'll do really, you know, when we're doing the full moon, we're doing releasing. We'll throw into the fire. That's like a physical, like you really, yeah. they really feel that letting go of that and watching it burn, and then we bring the sound in to just. Then now let's really connect in with our intuition and let's listen to the messages of our heart and let's listen to what's going on beneath the surface by getting really still and quiet and then even more stuff may come up. They may get a, a message that comes from a higher place that, that just locks in with what they already knew when they were journaling. So it's like bringing all of those energies together with ritual and with practical. And I, it just helps to deepen everything and really create a, a greater sense of connection with ourselves yeah. and with each other. Because when you do it in a group, it's so healing to, to, to be able to see people share with each other. And there's usually no accidents of why certain people come together on a moon night. You know, it's mm -hmm. like we find that a lot of people are going through the same things. And they're there as a support in a sacred space, which is also a great way to do that work. Yeah. I think that there's something about the collective, one on an energetic field. You yes. know, when you put, you know, I, even two minds don't just create two minds. They create, you know, three or four, depending on how you look at it. But there's like this exponential factor that happens. And, you know, like you were saying with people relating, and then it's a, it's almost like, okay, well, if this person's going through it too, when they know that they believe they can shift and change that, I, 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 you know, I can too, you know, and it's almost like, okay, we got this together. And it's allowing that sacred vulnerability, which is so, it's just so beautiful to watch. I mean, and they, they connect with each other. It's just, that's what I call the magic, you know, and especially 
when I notice that when you bring women together, because we need each other so much, and there's just this connection that there's this magic that happens, yeah. you know, just this amazing magic. And I, it's one of my favorite things to, to facilitate and one of my favorite things just to stand back and watch the connections that happen. I love that. So if uh, people are, you know, listening at, at home and they're finding, to go back a little bit to this unknown, right? What are some steps that somebody can do to get a little bit more comfortable in that unknown space? Like, okay. would it be like coming to one of these circles and, you know, I know some, uh, sometimes it's a women's only circle. So what about some of the guys that are watching too, you know, and things yeah. that people can do? Yeah. Well, I know we have the one coming up for the full moon where it's going to be men and women and all ages. And I would encourage people um, that especially now as we're going towards the end of the year and holidays can be stressful too. And all the unknowns that are going on in the world right now, you know, finding ways to come together with other people to, to make sure, I would say the, the best thing for people to do is make sure that you are making self-care time, mm. time to release the stress. Because when all of that builds up, you know, it's, it's what I call like your issues are in your tissues. <laughs> And so over time, all of that builds up and it causes such stress on the body that a lot of times we put our self-care last. Yeah. And I would love to see people put your self-care first because from all of that, everything else flows. And when we're in these unknown times, the more time you can get still and quiet, the more time you can do sound, meditation, all of those things that help you just really relax the body down, relax the mind down, let go of the mind chatter and allow your body to tell you what it needs to let go of. Yeah. You know, because in sound we'll have people, I tell them, you know, you have permission to laugh, to cry, whatever comes up, listen, because your body is telling you, I need to let this go. I need to release this. And so in these unknown times, like I said, the, the best thing to do is get yourself out in nature, take a walk, Find ways to, to release the stress. Um, make sure that you're taking just self-care time and putting it first, mm -hmm. not last, because um, we don't want you to go down, <laughs> right? So, and do the things that you love. I mean, think about when you were a kid and you used to get out and have adventures. Pick something and find even five or 10 minutes a day to, to do something that you really love if it's drawing, if it's, you know, listening to music, if it's taking a walk, if it's going to a sound bath or what, you know, meditation, find something that soothes your soul at least yeah. every day, even for five or 10 minutes. And you'll start to notice because it's, it's, you're feeding your soul, you're feeding your body, you're feeling, you know, your tissues take it in. Our cells feel all of this. Like I said, we hold our issues in our tissues. Those build up over time. So Give yourself that gift every day. That's beautiful. It's, it's so interesting that we have to remind or encourage, you know, people to put their self first. Yeah. Right. You know, we've, we've gotten so far away from realizing that this is our journey, our life. We're the ones seeing ourselves through our, seeing the world through our eyes. But yet it's all of these other things. But how can you show up for those other things if you're not showing up for yourself? Yeah. You know, and so it's really almost like a selfless thing to do, not a self selfish thing to do, you know, because in that you can be a better you, you can be less stressed, you're going to be your conversations are going to be easier, you can handle more, you can show up and be more present for people. Yeah, absolutely. And that's beautiful. Um, anything else you want to share today? No, I'm just happy. <laughs> I'm happy to be here. I mean, I, I want to I'm hoping to see some of you guys for the, the full moon. I think um, uh, I'm loving this space. I feel very blessed to, to be able to, um, to offer things in this space. I think that our community needs it. Mm -hmm. um, Absolutely. And it's great to gather again. It is, um, it's, and we have it as an outdoor area. I'm working on getting some more warming devices out there as well. Um, but you know, where can people find you if they're interested in some of the other things that you do? 
from like the the nature nature experiences to getting their moon charts done and all of that stuff as well. So they can find me on my website, which is kirstencoratinternational.com. Uh, you can find me on Instagram also at Kirsten Corrad International or Facebook as well. And um, and reach out. I'm always I always tell people you can DM me whenever you want because I I love interacting with people and I love educating. So reach out anytime, and then you'll find me here as well. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Thank it's you. been a pleasure. And thank you everybody for joining. Please, uh, you know, uh, like, comment, share, subscribe, all of those fun things that really help other people find this content so we can continue to create this content for you so you can learn about really cool metaphysical stuff, healing things, and everything for your mind, body, and soul. Have a beautiful day. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. If you enjoyed this conversation, please like it, subscribe, and share it with your friends. If you want to hear more about what we have going on and happening online or in, in the neighborhood, check out liberateyourself.com and sign up for our mailing list. Uh, also, follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Liberate Yourself. It's you are self, you are S E L F. Until next time, be powerful, be magical, and be free. <laughs>